welcome back to the rectory. We've now reached the last Sunday in the season of Trinity and of course we've reached the start of our second national lockdown. If you need anything over the next couple of weeks then please do not hesitate to be in touch. Of course it means for three Sundays we can't hold our services in our church buildings so this means that we are back now with the Zoom services at half past nine. If you would like uh, this Sunday, half past nine. If you would like to take part in that, then please do see the emails or let uh, get a message to me and I can tell you how to be part of those. There will also, of course, be our services uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. So let us begin our service today. its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before the foundation of the world, God chose us in Christ to be a holy people, to be brought into a unity in Christ, to be full of love. The glorious grace of God, freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's keep a moment of quiet to remember our failings before God. Have mercy on us, O God, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O God, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May God our Father pardon and deliver us from all our sins and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is the Collect for today, the last Sunday in the season of Trinity. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the, in, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully maltreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, 
but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed. Nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you, that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. And while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Throughout 2020, the use of the word contagious has generally had negative associations and consequences, but that doesn't have to be the case. As Christian people, contagious can be a really positive thing. Lee Hunt, an early English poet of the 19th century, wrote a poem about a man who woke from his sleep one night and saw an angel in his room. The angel was writing in a gold book the names of those who love the Lord. And is mine one? asked the man. Nay, not so, replied the angel. I pray thee then, said the man, write me as one who loves his fellow men. Next night, the angel came again to the same room and displayed the names of those blessed with the love of God and the man's name topped the list. This poem shows that the true love of God and the true love of our fellow human beings are like two sides of the same coin. One cannot exist apart from the other. And this is what we find in today's Gospel. Jesus is asked about the greatest commandment in the law. The book on answer, of course, is love of God. But Jesus did not stop there. He went on and gave a more practical answer. He gave the other side of the coin as well, which is love of neighbour. True love of God and genuine love of fellow human beings can be separated only in theory. In practice, they are inseparable. As Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus here is reacting against a one-dimensional understanding of love. For Jesus, true love must be in three dimensions. Love of God, love of neighbour and love of oneself. The first two are obvious from Jesus' words. 
The last one is not commanded, but presumed to be the basis of all loving. The commandments to, be, to love your neighbour as yourself presumes that you love yourself. Even though Jesus touched, or Jesus' answer touched on all these three dimensions of love, the point that Jesus is trying to make is this. When you ask a question that demands one straightforward answer, and the person answers your question and adds another thing that you did not actually ask for, it's most likely that the person is trying to get you to focus on the second part of the answer. So the emphasis on today's question about the greatest commandment is not the obvious love of God, but on the love of neighbour, which the Pharisees were trampling on. We must remember that the persecution of Jesus and his followers was championed by well-meaning religious people motivated by what they believed to be a zeal and a love for God. The same people asking about the first commandment are the ones trying to entrap and kill Jesus. They are so conscious about the love of God, yet they ignore and appear to be blind to the need to love the neighbour and fail to see but that by loving the neighbour, they are also loving God. Sadly, the error of the Pharisees is still with us here today. There are still too many people who try to separate love of fellow human beings from the love of God. Such love requires a commitment to human rights and to justice and to peace. We shall do well to heed the message of Jesus in today's gospel, that the true love of God and the true love of neighbour are two sides of the same coin. Any attempt to separate them is a falsification of the message of Christ. Indeed, as the author to the first letter of John puts it, those who say, I love God, and who hate their sisters or brothers are liars, for those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And our love for God must be contagious, if not more contagious than any virus. It must be so contagious that it's easy, very easy to pass on. How contagious with the love of God are we? So let us pray now for the church and for the world. Almighty God, grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the peoples of Wales and all nations in the ways of justice and peace. Cleanse prejudice and selfishness from our hearts and inspire us to search for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to respect the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources wisely to your glory and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. May we serve Christ in them and love one another as Jesus loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through your Holy Spirit, Comfort and heal all who suffer. 
give them courage and hope in their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. May the risen Saviour give them a share in his joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. and all-loving God, we pray to you through Christ the Healer, for all who suffer from COVID-19 here in Wales and across the world. We pray too for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Give strength to doctors, scientists, health carers and those who provide for our communities. Give wisdom to policy makers Give comfort to those in distress, the lonely and weak. Bring a sense of calm to us all in these days of uncertainty. As we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who showed compassion to the outcast, acceptance to the rejected, and who loved those whom no one else would love. Amen. So together, we share the words of the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord our God is the only Lord. We shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. God of the universe, when you raised your servant Jesus, you made him the light of the nations. May the salvation he brings us shine out to the ends of the earth. And may your name be blessed for ever and ever. Amen. May God bless us, keep us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you for being with us for our worship today. I hope you felt God's blessing and hand upon it. If you haven't yet taken part in a Zoom service, you'd be more than welcome to do so. It'd be nice to see you, and it's nice to see uh, a myriad of faces as we're worshipping. Uh, if you'd like to have a go, please do come along. Uh, look out for the details in the emails for the links and what have you. However, uh, that's it for today. So uh, there'll be a course service on Zoom uh, and Facebook and YouTube uh, next Sunday. But until then, please do stay safe uh, and... <coughs>
every blessing. And goodbye from Bobby as well. Ta-da!